What is up YouTube? It's Kuda Malo here coming at you with another exciting video. Okay, so building on the last video, if you just took a look in my history and went back to the last video, how to make bone broth soup, I'm at this point now. So basically what I did was I cut up all the vegetables, washed them, cleaned them. You get the idea. And then basically put them into a huge, all clad, three ply, I think this is a three ply, <laughs> 12 quart stock pot. So I've got my filtered water in there, alkaline filtered water in there, which is how I do it because I have one of those machines. I got my onions quartered, as you can see. This was the celery. Something I forgot to mention in the last video, I totally apologize, is I did put a huge bunch, like a handful, a huge bunch of parsley in there as well. And also I put in three bay leaves. So it's very, very important that that adds to the flavor profile. So that's something that was in there. I did not add any extra salt to this because this is already flavored enough. Like I said, I just wanted to cook down enough to the point where then I could taste it and see if I need to add more or less more salt or whatever the situation is. Anyways, that's basically the soup. I just turned this on. It's on the highest heat I have. I'm trying to bring it up to a boil. And then, wow, look at how gorgeous my roasted shank, beef shank, and oxtail came out. I mean, that is flavor central. So doing this in real time, what I want to basically do now is I want to add my shanks, right, with all, oh, look at all that juice. I want to add the shanks with all the juice into my bone broth soup. And look, wow, just look at that flavor. I can, oh my God, it's got a nice texture. It's got a nice shell. This is a step that most people miss when they're making their bone broth, which is, I think is just crucial. I mean, it's just, why would you do it any other way? But it adds so much flavor. I mean, look at the marrow in there. Oh, I could just eat that right now on its own. I mean, that is falling out of there pretty much. So you can see right through it, see? <laughs> but all that melted marrow is here. So I've already gone ahead and started the process of breaking down the marrow by roasting it. It's just gorgeous. I mean, <laughs> I can't explain this any other way. This is going to be so tasty. Oxtail, look, out, look at how those turned out. Beautiful, nice color. All this nice rendered fat in there, which I am going to add to my bone broth soup. Like, I'm going to add all this nice fat and drippings and the fond as the... You know, hoity-toities like to call it, but it's just, oh, if I flip this over, which I did, look at that. I mean, that is just, I've already started the process of breaking down the marrow, getting some of those nutrients out of there. And a lot of those nutrients are right here. So make sure I'm going to deglaze my pan with whatever wine I have. This is my roommate's wine. But basically, I'm going to just deglaze, put a little wine in there, which I'll show you in a second. But as you can see, I'm pretty, I'm getting pretty close to the top of my crock pot. These were the rest of those little tiny bits of the tail, but even these came out great. I mean, this is all, this is bone. This is the bone going into the broth. Thus, the two together makes the bone broth. Sorry to be kind of corny like that, but that's the way I am. Anyways, this is going in there. This is going in there. Okay, this next part might get a little tricky. I'm holding the camera with one hand and holding the wine with the other. So what I want to do is put in about, I'd say about a half a cup or so of wine. You don't need a whole lot, but just something like that. Then taking a wooden spoon of some sort. I think this one's bamboo actually. Yeah, this one's bamboo. But basically I just want to scrape up some of the stuff in the pan. Oh, all that flavor. This is so much flavor right here. The flavor profile, and look, nothing burned too much, so to speak. It's more like browning, browning, browning. I just pulled it out of my oven. My oven was on 350 degrees. Uh, what would you say that took? That took about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes maybe? I can't remember from the last video. Anyways, basically you get the idea. So basically now that all this wine is mixed in with this stuff, I cannot do this with one hand, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pan and pour it, pour the juices and the fat and everything else that's left over from roasting off the beef shanks into this big, huge stock pot. So part two of this bone broth video complete. 
I do want to say, please hit that subscribe button down there. Sometimes it's over here. Sometimes it's over here. YouTube's kind of screwy. They change where the location is. But please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you want to keep abreast of what new videos are coming out there from me. More exciting, great content. But I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the month. So please hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button if you like this video. Down there in the description, there's a link to my Facebook page. That's Cooter Malloy Product Reviews. Make sure to visit that Facebook page. Give me a subscribe and a like on there as well if you like what you're seeing and you want to see more of it. Lastly, down there in the description there down below, there is a link to, my, to a lot of great products that are online. So if you want to check out some cool products, I just recently updated those. Check those out, and I will catch you all bone brothily on the next video. Oh, in case you're wondering, I will bring this to a boil. So high heat, right? Bring this to a boil. Once it gets up to a boil, I will turn it down to super low. Like we're talking this low, low, and just basically simmer it away for the next 12 hours. So around three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to have some nice bone broth soup. I don't recommend doing it this late if you're home. You know, you always want to check on it and that kind of vibe. But because I'm crazy about this soup, I check it every 20 minutes just to make sure it's good and delicious. All right, y'all. I will catch you all on the next video.